Hi ladies, in case you are absent, we are going to be going over the introduction to political theory. Uh, as you can see here on the slide, your homework for tonight is to read the first chapter uh, and then you need to take the Cornell notes. You can look on Classroom to find the discussion on how to do that. Um, you also have an Ed Puzzle that you will need to complete for homework as well. All right, so let's get started. When we look at government and politics, you have to understand that they are two different things. And when we look at the issues, that's really what falls under the idea of politics. Okay, so we know that there is a federal deficit. Okay, and we know that there's a problem with the federal deficit. However, it's not just a simplistic answer of simple math of spending um, and borrowing less and taxing more. It does become political because as you look to answering these questions, what should we spend or borrow less for? Who should we tax more? How? How much? What should we cut? Should we cut defense spending? Spend on health? Should we do the reverse? Should we tax the wealthy? What is the definition of wealthy? Should we cut taxes for the middle class? Well, then, then we have to define the middle class, and those all become political issues. So that's just something for you to keep in the back of your mind. You do need to understand that everything is politics. Every single issue that you can think of is political, not mathematical. The issues, they are conflicts, whether they are real or apparent, uh, whether they're between different interest groups, between ideas or beliefs uh, of different citizens, they all boil down to this. They can be apparent, uh, whether you're arguing over two plans that have very superficial differences and we may be arguing over the wording. They could be real issues with clear-cut choices, but these issues really are the meat and potatoes of politics. So you need to decide for yourself as we begin this study, what issues matter to you? Do you care a little, a lot? Do you not care at all about any of these? Which one matters the most to you? And these are just a list of some of the hot button issues. There's a lot more, but you've got economics and social and foreign policy, gun control, military, immigration. Uh, and these again are just to name a few. When you look at the American public, most Americans are not engaged, all right? Now, you are sitting in a classroom where most of your classmates are going to have an understanding of what is happening around them, all right? This is a special class. Most young adults under the age of 30 are not engaged. They don't know what's going on. They're not informed, and they do not participate. Uh, and so part of taking this class is the hope that you will become engaged adults. So when we look at Americans, most young Americans do not regularly read newspapers. This does not just mean the paper Editions. It can also be online. We're talking about several articles, not just a headline. Okay. Following political news, uh, understanding how the government works. We're going to watch some very sad videos later in the year looking at people not even being able to understand that there are three branches of government at times or what those three branches do. Uh, if you look at our turnout rates for voting, it, they are abysmal, and you will understand that most young Americans and most Americans in general do not vote. Uh, and so you need to see what this what this means to you. So we have to understand some terms in order to get through the rest of the year. So you need to understand when we're talking about power uh, in, in politics, political power, we're looking at the ability of one person to get someone else to act in accordance with your actions and intentions. Okay, so... Sometimes this is an obvious exercise of power when you've got the president ordering soldiers into combat. Uh, it can also be subtle powers when you have like a speechwriter who is changing the tone of the speech and what the president was planning to say, and the president reads it anyway, even though there is no obvious power that is being employed you do have that speechwriter who is exerting power over the president. All right, this, this issue of power is found within all uh, human interactions. Anywhere we go, 
anywhere in society, not just in politics. All right. You have to understand that when we're looking at politics, we're looking at legitimacy. And when we're looking at this idea of having the authority conferred by law, our government's legitimacy comes from the Constitution. Okay. When we are looking at authority, political authority, we're looking at the right to use power. And people who use power may or may not actually have authority. If we look to that speechwriter again, that is not someone who has the authority to, in, to exert his, his decisions on the public, and yet that happens. When we look at formal authority, it is the right to exercise power that's vested in a governmental office. All right, when we look at opinions, okay, most Americans will agree that the government is not legitimate without some sense of democracy, and yet that's not always been the case. If we look way back to the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists, which hopefully you already remember, uh, the Federalists were worried about the new government being too democratic, and the Anti-Federalists were worried it wasn't democratic enough. So, I mean, we look at this. We're going to see five views um, on the U.S. democracy, and these will come back throughout the year. So we have the class view. This is the idea that the government is dominated by capitalists, and of course starts with Marx. When we look at the power elite, we are looking at business leaders with other elites, and that the government is, is basically dominated by a few top leaders who are mostly outside of the government, but then uh, exert their influence. You have the bureaucratic view in which in order to make our country run efficiently, the government affairs are all put into the hands of bureaucrats. They're the ones that really implement the policy. This is the idea that the government uh, is dominated by the appointed officials, not elected, but appointed officials. And their job becomes not just then to implement the policy, but because they are the experts and they're trying to make things run efficiently, power is deferred to them and they actually do make policy. Um, you've also got the pluralistic view and this is the idea that there is so much division within this country that n there is no one entity that has complete, con complete control. Therefore it's this competition amongst all these vested interest groups and opinions that actually shape our policy. Um, so those are like the main four. Then you have this idea of the creedal view, and this is kind of a branch off. It says that the other four views are correct on how power can be distributed, but they miss the point on how policy decisions are actually made, and they are made by morally impassioned elite, and that's going to be the group that actually drives all of those important political changes that we have seen historically through the years. Okay, so that's, again, this is just a primer and a beginning step. All right, you have to understand that as we look at these, all of these ideas are right, at least in a part. The idea is we're looking at this, you have to figure out who is governing and to what end. Okay. When we look at who is ruling, Who they are affects what they are going to do for us and to us, all right? If it's the power elite, they may not care about um, the little guy, okay? Um, if it is this pluralistic view and everybody's making decisions, that's also going to change how we're governed, all right? So as we look at this, it really determines how the government is going to affect our daily lives. And while people are disengaged with the government, you have to understand that the government is affecting you at every turn every day. So as we move further on in the year, again, this is our first lesson, but as we move further along, we're going to look at the idea of who governs. Okay, and we can't do that without looking at these idea of how the government makes 
or fails to make the decisions about all those issues that we were talking about at the beginning here. Okay, when we're looking at these issues on economics and social and foreign policy, military, gun control, immigration, abortion, all of those are important topics and you're not going to be able to understand okay, how they make these decisions if we don't know who governs. All right, ladies, I will see you in class next time. Have a great day. And don't forget, you have homework. And we'll see you next time. Bye.